What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I just want to take a look at Sugar Ray Robinson a little bit, show you some of his illustrations, show you a little bit of his articles. Sugar Ray Robinson's always been good to boxing. So I just want to show a little gratitude and just take a little look at Sugar Ray Robinson, his career, and let's just talk about him a little bit. Now we know Sugar Ray Robinson was a great welterweight, a great welterweight, fought a lot of solid guys down there. We mostly know him as a middleweight, but Sugar Ray Robinson was also a lightweight. Here we have Sugar Ray Robinson fighting Kid Gavilon. Kid Gavilon was a welterweight champion from Cuba. And they had two fights as a welterweight. Their second fight was in Philadelphia. Sugar Ray Robinson defended his title against Kid Gavilon. But Kid Gavilon was a solid, solid, solid fighter. Great welterweight. So that was an outstanding victory for Sugar Ray Robinson. So this fight took place July 11th, 1949, in Philadelphia, where it was a 15-round decision win for Sugar Ray Robinson. Kid Gavilon put up a great account of himself. He even threw a couple of windmills, but that wasn't enough to defeat the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Kid Gavilon was known for the bolo punch and the dagger punch. Outstanding fighter was Kid Gavilon. This was a classic welterweight fight. Sugar Ray Robinson defends his title in 15 rounds. Here you have 19-year-old Sugar Ray Robinson, who just completed his Golden Glove competitions, advancing into the professionals. Sugar Ray Robinson, my estimation, pound for pound, definitely the greatest fighter of all time. There's no question about it. This photo was used for his welterweight championship induction when he campaigned for the welterweight after moving up from lightweight. But this was Sugar Ray as a youngster. Outstanding fighter. Welterweight champion blames New York State Commission keeping him out of the world middleweight title bout. Now, see, the problem Sugar Ray Robinson was having, he was trying to go into middleweight back in the early 40s. But it was a lot of politics going on because he was facing Jake LaMotta several times as a welterweight because Jake LaMotta was a welterweight. Rocky Graziano was a welterweight. But Sugar Ray Robinson couldn't get a welterweight title shot from Red Cochran. So he was trying to go up to the middleweight division. And it just kept keeping him out. So then the war came. 42, and he had to wait it out to 46. And uh, the first opportunity he had, when there was a relinquish in the title, and he was able to get an opportunity to face Tommy Bell in 1946. But Sugar Ray Robinson, he was just, I mean, the things you see fighters do today, he was doing and more back in the late 30s. He was knocking out middleweights as a lightweight. In sparring, he knocked out every, almost every fighter he sparred. 
He was just a phenomenal fighter. Marty Servo refused to fight Sugar Ray Robinson for many years because Sugar Ray Robinson had already defeated Marty Servo. So rather than him lose to Sugar Ray Robinson, because remember, there was racism back at that time. And he couldn't, he couldn't dare to lose to Sugar Ray Robinson a second time. So he just relinquished the title, gave it up the belt. And that's when Ray Robinson fought Tommy Bell for that vacant welterweight strap. Now, this book that you're looking at here, this book is all Sugar Ray Robinson. I have five books like this of all Sugar Ray Robinson to show you the amount of pages. Most of the books that I have, most of them are over five to 600 pages. But these books... A thousand pages per book, and I have about five of them. They're all Sugar Ray Robinson, his entire career. So what we're looking at right now is Sugar Ray Robinson just getting ready for a fight. Now, these articles, I used to collect every single newspaper that I can find. My dad would do the same thing. And we would get Spanish newspapers, French newspapers, American newspapers, comics, everything that had boxing in it. And we would just take our time on a Saturday after the gym and just start putting them in books. And we did that for many, many years. And Sugar Ray Robinson was one of those fighters that we love to combine and compel into books. Here you have Ray Robinson in one of the salons that he owned with Billy Eckstein. Billy Eckstein was a jazz musician. Celebrities used to go into those salons all the time. Here Sugar Ray Robinson trains in Pompkin Lakes. Sugar Ray Robinson to your right. That's Sugar Ray Robinson with his beautiful wife, Edna May, and his newborn son. Ray had a son from a previous marriage. You see Ray here, tap dancing. And this is kind of like how he started his life, really. He was a, a dancer. He used to dance on the street. That was part of his hustle. Shine shoes. You have Ray here on his block where he had a laundry mat. He had an enterprise where they would do real estate and everything else. He had a bakery, a restaurant, a bar and grill. Here you see him facing Gene Farmer. He loses his title to Gene Former. Ray and Gene Former had some unbelievable fights. Here you have Ray. And this is Ruby Goldstein, the referee, in the background here. Ruby Goldstein was an outstanding lightweight fighter in the 1920s. He had wars with Ray Miller, Sid Terrace. I mean, just an outstanding fighter. At that time, they had what was called neighborhood brawls. Basically, 
you were the man. You were the champion on your block in your neighborhood, and everybody idolized you. And you had to defend that honor by fighting whoever was in another neighborhood. Here you have uh, Gene Farmer walking away from Ray after Ray was thrown out of the ring. Ruby Goldstein starts to count. And this is when they started the 20 count when you fall out of the ring. Gene Farmer at work. This is a great, great fight. You can see Ray falling out of the ring, climbing back in. You see, most of these articles are in different languages. Like I said, we used to have tons and tons of newspapers, and then the end of the month, we would start chopping them up and putting them in books. It was just a thing to do. I never thought I would have the collection I have. We just started as fun. So here you have Sugar Ray Robinson and Gene Fomer in 57 preparing for a return match. Gene Foreman and his mother. A couple of photo ops. And these two combatants prepared for their fight. Call us the Cold Wave. Middleweight challenger Gene Former of West Jordan, Utah. This is where G uh, Gene Former, he was from West Jordan, Utah. Waves to fans after weighing in session at Garden yesterday as his manager Marv Jensen right shows way to dressing in. Shows him to the dressing room. This is Marv Jensen to the right of Gene Farmer. So their tail of the tape. Here you have Sugar Ray Robinson, Jim Norris in the middle, Gene Former to the right. Robinson left, Gene Former right, shakes hands after signing for the title bout at New York. That IBC president, Jim D. Norris in the middle, the World Middleweight Championship scrap is slapped. For December 12th. I'll just scan the tail of the tape. Robinson was 35, Gene Former 25. Robinson 160 pounds, Gene Former 160 pounds. Robinson 5 foot 11 inches, Gene Former 5 foot 8. Robinson had a 72 and a half inch reach, Gene Former 69 inch reach. He had Robinson after the bout hanging out with his manager with a finger pointing there, George Gangford. Now, former awaits Robinson's decision on return bout. Sugar Ray Robinson is game, then Gene Former is willing, and that was the status yesterday of a return bout between the battered Sugar Ray and the young Mormon, Bruiser, who had knocked the 36-year-old champion through the ropes and beaten him. He 
You beat him out of the middleweight title in 15 grueling rounds at the Garden on Wednesday night. There's a few articles in various papers on that fight. Sugar Ray Scales, 160, former 157. Just articles after articles. Just tune up for Sugar Ray. Robinson tactics change for Gene. Now, see, what Sugar Ray Robinson was known for was changing his mind the night before a fight, sometimes the day of the fight, on what his purse was going to be, on what side of the ring he was going to be in. I mean, you never knew what Sugar Ray at that point of his career. And you know what? I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Now, I'm just kind of skipping around here, the book a little bit. Here you have Ray Robinson about to face, he's about to face Joey Maxim. Now, at this point, Sugar Ray Robinson was 31, Maxim was 30. Robinson's weight was 159, Maxim was 175. Robinson's height 5'11", Maxim 6. Reach for Robinson, 72 and a half. Maximum 72 and a half. And it's interesting. They have the same reach. But uh, that goes to show with that weight. You know, his electrolytes didn't catch up with him where Maxim's did. And that shows why Robinson was drained after the 10th round. And he started, you know, he was falling all over himself and... His punches wasn't doing any damage at all. Couldn't keep Maxim off of him. Couldn't keep him honest. And then finally, the 14th round, it couldn't continue. This is Robinson in that fight with Maxim. See Robin falling. The Heat KO Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar's punchy power. Greater medic reports. They did a test on Robinson's punching power. And he punched harder than his average weight class. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was about to face off with uh, Carmen Basilio. Now in this rematch, this is when Sugar Ray... K.O.'s Gene Farmer with a perfect check left hook. Farmer goes down and Farmer goes out. Woke up, had no idea how he got to the locker room. And Robinson is once again the middleweight champion of the world. Ray Robinson says, the Lord and Joe Lewis joins hands to make me a world champion again. Those are Ray Robinson's comments after the fight. Gene Foreman says, I was careless. I must ha have dropped my guard. This is Robinson and Basilio. This is right after the Gene Former fight.
fight facts and figures. So the Chicago, this Chicago bout, let's get this steady here. Chicago Stadium paid attendance $14,757. Gross gate, I'm sorry, 14,757 people. Gross gate, $158,643. Federal tax, $15,864. The state tax is $14,000. $277. City tax, $3,855. The net gate was $124,647. Robinson's share of the net gate was $37,340. Uh, I'm sorry, $394. Former's share of the net gate was $37,394. Television and radio receipts, 100,000. Robinson's TV radio share, 30,000. Former's TV radio share, 30,000. So they split that cost. Robinson's total purse was 67,394. Former's total purse was 67,394. So they split that. Interesting. So for some more facts and figures, four times champ. February 14th, 1951, knockout champion Jake Lamada in the 13th round. July 10th, 1951, lost 15-round decision in a title bout with Randy Turpin. September 12th, 1951, he regains the crown by knocking out Turpin in the 10th round. December 18th, 1952, announced retirement from the ring. December 9th, 1955, knocked out Bobo Olsen in the second round to win the title for third time. January 2nd, 1957, lost title to Gene Fulmer on 15-round decision. May 1st, 1957, captured title for fourth time with 15-round knockout of Gene Foreman. That was the last fight he had leading up to the Carmen Basilio fight. And this is, uh, once again, Sugar Robinson and Gene Foreman. And like I said, the, only, the purpose of this video, I'm just showing you guys some articles of Ray Robinson. This just happens to be the Gene Foreman fight. This is a close-up shot of that uppercut check hook landed clean on Gene Foma's deramius muscle right off of the mandibular that actually shifts his brain to the right, causing his whole side to paralyze up into his spine, up to his neck, to his brain, and he's out. That whole process takes about two and a half seconds. He was out before he hit the canvas. Now, former is almost as if, you know, you cut a head off of a chicken and he's still moving around. That's what Gene Former's reaction was. It was close to Trevor Burbick when Mike Tyson hit him in the temple with a short left uh, hook. His legs were moving, but his brain wasn't working. And that's what's happening here with Gene Fulmer. Fulmer versus Robinson, Sugar Ray's last chance. And he took full advantage of it. Now we're getting a little bit into the common basilio bout. Basilio O.K.'s return. Ray decides today. I was looking at something earlier. Basilio O.K.'s Ray return.
Now, Sugar Ray reveals a bribe offer that was made to him by a Mr. Gray. This was with the uh, Carmen Basilio about. He was offered a bribe before that he refused. So it's always uh, curious. Basilio won the first fight, even though that was a heck of a fight, and Robinson won the second fight. And you just never know, but uh, these are pretty much stand-up guys. But you never know. Robinson, he won a title like five times. And these things are going back and forth. And Jim Norris was the president of the IBC. Gene Morris, Gene Norris, was a, a numbers runner before he got into boxing. And he was a mobster. He had ties with the mob. So, uh, you never know. This is Ray Robinson on the scale. With Carmen Basilio before they're about September 23rd. This was the front page of the news. I remember my dad clipping this one himself. He was on the other couch from me. This is the, uh, the front page of that newspaper. Now, when you were on the front page of the paper, you were something special, because most of those articles, uh, the main articles were on the back of the paper. And they had uh, horse racing at that time. OTB was real big at that time. Basilio, new middleweight king. Robbie talks of quitting. If you didn't go along with the fight, they, they decided for you how to victory. He had to knock out Basilio in order to win this fight. Ray Robinson, beautiful right uppercut to the sternum. Basilio balls his way in. Robinson's waiting for him with that right uppercut. That's what blew up his eye. Basilio had a huge hematoma right above his left orbital bone. You can see it here. Started swelling. This is when boxing was boxing, I'll tell you. I have things in my man cave that I, I'm not going to show on these channels. But they're a thing to behold. I have museums constantly to this day. I received 12 letters within the last month because I made a mistake and wanted to get it con consigned and had about two or three different brokers come. And that was it. It all went haywire after that. But I got things from 1800s. I got belts. I have fight posters, 80 of them. Jack Dempsey, George Carpentier, Jack Dempsey, Gene Foma. I'm sorry, Gene Tunney, Sugar Ray Robinson, and Jake Lamont are the original. Uh, G, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, Jake Lamont are the very first fight. I have the fight when he regained that victory with Jake LaMotta. I have Henry Armstrong when he defeated Barney Ross, became the welterweight crown. I have Henry Armstrong with P.D. Salmon, Henry Armstrong with uh, Lou Ambers, all those posters. When he won all the titles, had them all simultaneously.
Billy Robinson and Basilio. You can see the cut over Basilio's left eye here. It's a beautiful body shot by Ray. And you can look at that. He used to call it an egg over Carmicilio's left eye. This is the same one that Willie Pep suffered in the third fight with Sandy Sadler. Ray and his wife going out after the fight. Jackie Robinson, Sugar Ray Robinson. This is Ray packing up after a golf game. So this video is over half an hour, so I'm just going to cut it short. I'll never be able to show you everything in this book in one take. Maybe I'll do a couple of series of them, read some articles to you. But I just wanted to show Ray Robinson some love. Like I said, I have 10 books like this, so I probably have over... 20,000 pages and articles. I got some pictures there that are unbelievable. A lot in his welterweight, uh, when he was a welterweight. Let me show you one more page. I actually just got to a different book altogether. This one is uh, Con Basilio. He says he was robbed of a title when he faced Johnny Saxton. I'm sorry, um, yeah, Johnny Saxton. Basilio B. Saxton to the punch and fast and fighting with Carmen scored heavily. Carmen Basilio was an outstanding fighter. Great, great, well to win. All right, so this is Scrapbook Boxing. Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Salute. Till next time.